The following program has been pre recorded. Good morning and welcome to Light on the Heartland, presented as a public service of Bot Radio Network. I'm Cherie Eckloff. This morning, we welcome three guests to the program, and they are Scott Miller. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. And his lovely wife, Adrian Miller. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning. And also Jacob Leckage. Good morning, Jacob. Good morning. Thanks for having us. No relation. That's right. right. <laughs> okay. You're here to talk to us about the Heartland Recovery Program, a ministry of CNS International Ministries headquartered in Bethel, Missouri. So let's begin with an explanation of what Heartland Recovery is. Who wants to start? Is that going to yeah. be Jacob? That'll be okay. Me. Yeah, so Heartland Recovery is a joint mission of Heartland CNS International Ministries where we have a recovery program that is residential for hurting men, women, and children. And so whenever we mention Heartland Recovery, we're speaking of all three of those programs together. Mm -hmm. They are separate programs. Um, The men do their own thing in their own location. Women, obviously, in their own location. And then children are run through houses. Uh, But we have learned that we function best whenever we work together as a team. So Heartland Recovery is the programs of Heartland that work to help hurting men, women, and children together. So you said it is a recovery program. Is it mainly for those with addictions? Right. So we have defined hurting in a broader sense. Typically, when we talk about hurting, it's individuals that have any type of life-altering issues. Now, we as Christians recognize that as a sin problem, Mm -hmm. but also that the sin problem, it does manifest itself in a variety of different ways in people's lives. So mostly... Yes, you are correct. That does look like drug addiction or alcohol addiction of those sorts. But we've also had individuals that have a variety of different life controlling issues and just things that they need help with, that they get to a place in life where they're almost stuck in a sense. Mm. And so we have served people, as I mentioned, of all kinds of different issues, struggling with different things. But most of the time, yes, it is drug and alcohol addiction. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you also serve youth. Is that a particular age of youth? So we have youth from newborns all the way up to around 16 years old. And the youth typically in the situations that we see today are coming from hurting places. Mm -hmm. So they're not so much as what we would say just very loosely bad youth, Mm -hmm. but they're youth that have been hurt very badly by Mm -hmm. other individuals. Most of the time, the youth that come to our programs are coming from an environment that is very harmful for them to be in, and we're providing a safe environment for them where we can equip them, we can help them to grow in all areas of life to be contributing members of society one day that are redeemed by the power of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily an addiction thing with the youth. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of our youth programs come through a family structure. Mm -hmm. So we were formerly more of an institutional setup with a youth program, and we have found that working with youth, it's much more effective to be in a home environment. Mm -hmm. So our youth program is actually ran through multiple houses. Okay. The Mm -hmm. houses have a married man and woman Christian couple that are the house parents of the house, and they structure their house as normal as possible and try to make it as normal of a home environment for these residents of the youth program while they're with us. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like a Christian youth home. Yes, then. ma'am, that's exactly Okay. Do you have a title? Yes, ma'am. I am the director of the youth program. Okay, so you're perfectly stationed right there mm-hmm. to tell us about the youth program. So, Scott, what is your position with Heartland Recovery? So I work at the Heartland Men's Recovery Program, and I'm the assistant director there. And what does your job entail? Well, you know, we look over program and the dynamics of the program. And then also into like the last year, we've grown together as a strategic planning team to see how we can just move the programs forward, you know, and Mm -hmm. um, start also building our relationships outside of Heartland. So we've really been focusing on external relationships Mm -hmm. and how we can help the surrounding communities. Oh, okay. Adrian, I would guess that you are in charge of the women. Yes, okay. I'm the dir- director of the Women's Recovery Program. Uh huh. And how did each of you get involved in the Heartland Recovery Program? 
what prompted you, I guess, to use your talents in this way? Well, all three of us went through the recovery programs. Oh, okay. So you're um, graduates. Yes, oh. all of us are. Um, oh. Very proud graduates, too. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, like, I know for me, like, God just really put a desire in my heart to continue helping hurting people. And at the time, I didn't know what it would be. I thought maybe it might be with the youth. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I just stayed on in the women's program. After I graduated, I kind of worked as a junior staff member as a while, um, became house manager, assistant director, and then director. Mm -hmm. So I've been involved with the women's home for 21 years. Wow, that's great. I don't think anybody can help someone else go through something unless they've been in a situation somewhat like that. Mm -hmm. No one can understand especially when you're dealing with something like an emotional or spiritual problem, you know? We have learned that peers are such a great asset um, so that we, when we have residents that are struggling with issues, most of the time their group leader is going to have been through the program. Mm-hmm. So they can talk about their experiences with roommates or what it was like to work with someone that was difficult while working through the recovery process. Mm-hmm. So that, that kind of peer-to-peer is one thing that we're very excited that our program does have to offer. And we can say, we've been there, I understand, yes. you know, at least in part of what you're experiencing. And they will know that you really do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that how you and Scott met at Heartland? No. no? <laughs> so she got in Heartland, I believe, in 2001, 2002. Two. So in 1999, she lived in Warsaw, Illinois. I lived in Keokuk, Iowa. Um, mutual friend we met. She took me to her senior prom, dumped me afterwards. <laughs> um, then I went into a 10-year drug addiction because of oh. how oh. hard I took it. Yeah, that, that part's a little oh, joke. Oh, poor so. Adrian. <laughs> um, You're being his scapegoat. <laughs> Always. So when she, when she dumped me, she met up with a different guy. They got married. He had a problem, so they went to... Uh, they called it Charlie's Place. Oh, yeah, Charles Sharp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So that's uh-huh. what they called it back then before Heartland. Right, yeah. So her husband left and all that stuff. Anyways, mm-hmm. 2010 is when I came into Heartland, and then I just felt a calling to stay. And about a year after my program, they asked me to come on as staff. So I've been there since 2012. And then we actually started courting in 2016 and got married in the same year. You were telling me before we started recording that you celebrated seven years? Yes, seven mm-hmm. years, uh, July 29th. Oh, oh I still remember. good job. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I, yeah. I had some flowers in case it, if I picked the wrong date. <laughs> I think all three of us, I can speak confidently. We just have a passion to try to help hurting people, really mm. for people to know Jesus. Mm. Mm. But with our background, it seems like that's what Jesus has used us for to help people that had similar backgrounds, yeah, to yeah. show them that there is hope in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, take us through the program. What, on a typical day, would a young man in your care, or a young woman, or uh, it's probably a little different for youth, right. maybe? Yeah. What would that be like? So a typical day, I mean, men and the women are fairly the same schedule, a little bit different. But So we have chapel Monday through Saturday, mm-hmm. and then uh, we have Bible journaling and rec. So like the men's center, we have a full court gym, like free weights and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice facility. We do one-on-ones, and then we have class 12 to 3 every other day, and the other days we do servanthood. So it might be some projects around Heartland, or it might be we go to like Bethel, maybe Quincy, you know, and trying to help out the different communities in that event. Mm -hmm. And then we go to church on Sundays to get one-on-one. So that's a pretty typical day. Mm-hmm. Once they check in to the program, and it's 12 months, once they check in, are they able to leave the campus or do they stay there? So the first 30 days, there's no contact. And then after that, they can get phone calls and letters. And then we allow a couple visits per month on property. Then mm-hmm. after six months, they can do an off-property visit once a month. Mm-hmm. And then there's also like a three-day visit and a five-day yeah, I imagine that's sort of merit-based. They earn that ability to do that. Well, we, we have an evaluation mm-hmm. set up several times throughout our program. It's at four, six, eight, and ten months. Um, so the four and the eight month are kind of like progress reports. This is how you're progressing. These are things that 
need to be strengthened. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they have to meet a certain percentage, we call it, in order to phase up. Um, It is structured in such a way that especially with phase one, um, you would have to work really hard not to phase up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So it is sort of merit-based. We feel like at that that six month mark is really crucial um, in terms of sobriety. Six months is a major accomplishment, and in our program, it's also a major accomplishment. So hopefully, by the time we get to six months, people's thinking is a lot clearer. Yeah, they have an established relationship with Jesus. They've learned how to listen to and heed the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. um, and they have re- enough restored relationships with their family or their friends that they would be visiting with that we're confident that they're going to make wise choices and good decisions mm-hmm. in the midst of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of times those issues come out of those relationships. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't want them too early in the mm-hmm. process to reenter yeah. that same type of relationship or that same position in that relationship that would cause a fallback, right. I guess. Mm-hmm. And so after after visits and things like that, we really encourage processing with our group leader who was there to oversee pretty much every aspect of their program. Just to, you know, what went on in your visit? What were the highlights? What were the low points? Did you guys talk about anything pertinent? Because a lot of times, again, with residents, there's things that they need to make right. And sometimes those conversations with family members can be extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. And not always well received. Yeah. So we do encourage that restoration, constantly working on that, and even using wisdom about does that relationship need to look restored and the fact that it's still an active relationship. Yeah, right, right. Toxic friends, those are easy Mm. to cut, (laughs) but not always so easy with family. Right. You're listening to Light on the Heartland, a public service of Bot Radio Network. I'm Cherie Eckloff, and we're talking with Scott Miller, Adrian Miller, and Jacob Lekich with Heartland Recovery Program. So I know traditional rehab is pretty expensive. Is there a charge to the people who go through this program? So our programs are unique in the sense that thanks to the provisions of God and some donors, that we have the ability to cover all of the cost for wow. the residents of the program while they are with us. Mm-hmm. So we are uh, very blessed to be able to do that and to provide that for them. As we know very well and intimately and personally, most of the time when you're in active addiction recovery, financial management is not your strong suit. That's true. So it would be very hard-pressed on us to expect them to be able to pay their way mm. through an addiction recovery program. And the same goes for the youth. Most of the time, youth come from situations that are less than desirable, and the households that they come from don't have the means to support them uh, very much so. So we have been very blessed to have the ability to be donor-funded for the entire 30 years of this ministry and have the ability to offer this opportunity at no cost for the resident. Mm, Praise God for that, that other people would care that much to give their financial, because that's not inexpensive, especially these days. Everything's gone up because they're there for a whole year. Mm -hmm. You're feeding them, I assume, three times a day. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) The overhead of where they stay. The women stay in a house, don't they, like a home? Yes, it's a very nice um, Mm -hmm. three-story brick home, about 5,000 square feet. Wow, yeah. We can um, house up to 12 so it's it's a beautiful home, and we really strive to keep a home environment. We feel like that that's very, very important mm-hmm. to our residents coming through to know how to manage a household, how to cook a meal, um, mm-hmm. how to maintain your home yes. in the midst of other responsibilities. So the ladies do share responsibilities. Um, the kitchen's a great place to learn a lot of discipline mm-hmm. um, and communication skills and just general life skills, how to grocery shop, how to plan a menu, how to make sure you have everything you need for that, and then just basic cooking mm-hmm. skills. So And the cleaning up. Yes, and the cleaning up. <laughs> we clean a lot at the women's <laughs> home. Yeah, but you um, do. And so it's a very warm, we want it to be very warm, mm-hmm. um, and the residents feel well cared for. You know, even though 
there is no cost to residents coming into our program. We offer a very high level of care. Mm. And so that's something that we really focus on keeping ourselves and staff up to date on just different techniques, sometimes different ways to handle situations. Um, We do trainings and things along those lines. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can make sure that we're taking very good care of the people that God's in our way. Yeah. And how about the men, Scott? What are their living arrangements? So we have a dorm setting. Mm. So right now we're trying to get around 40 people into the men's program. And I think today we'll have 39. But because of the volume of men that we have, you know, Uh a house wouldn't probably be suitable. So we have a dorm and stuff. Like Jacob said, the youth have a couple of houses for the girls and boys. and They have families that they live with yes. where the men are like living in a big apartment building kind of thing. It'd be kind of like a college dorm. Right, right. So, Is there any like job training for these men and women as they're going through the program? Like you said, they go to classes from 12 to 3, I think you said. Do you have any sort of program for when they do graduate, what they might be able to do for a living to support themselves, that kind of thing? Well, what we have is servanthood where they can learn some skills and stuff like that. We do bring guys to, right now it's Kirksville, to get um, the resumes built and mm. to do mock interviews and yeah. such. So part of our exit strategy is to help men and women to have jobs, you know, when they leave yeah. here. Mm-hmm. So, and that's been, I think, pretty successful. We're partnering with different people around, mostly around our area, you know, the Kirksville, Hannibal, Quincy area, like that. So we're trying to help them to be successful when they transition from Heartland to wherever they're going. Mm -hmm. Um, We also have a Bible college, which is a Mm two-year and it's accredited. So we encourage the men and women and the youth too that it might be a good option for them when they graduate. Mm -hmm. And then typically when you go to Bible college, you also will have a job. Mm -hmm. So when you get down to Bible college, you don't have no debt either. So that's another great resource that we have at Heartland. Uh, Like I said, a year sobriety a year learning the basics about Christianity. You can go to Bible college and kind of what Paul says, then you can eat more of the meat. Yes. We try to focus more on the spiritual milk. Mm-hmm. What's the graduation rate? I haven't looked in 2023, but I believe the 2022, when we looked at it, it was about 50% of the men will graduate. I think it's probably even a higher number for women. I don't have their statistics, but one out of two, and you know, I think that's probably above average Mm-hmm. for the national statistics. And Jacob, in the youth homes, is your goal to reestablish them in with their birth family? Yeah, absolutely. So for the youth recovery program, what we have here, we have established basically five goals for the program as far as five areas of life that we're seeking to help these residents in while they're there. So you have the spiritual component of it. Uh, we are unashamedly believers in Jesus Christ. We believe that true redemption um, the true restoration of an individual is only found through the gospel, yes. the good news of the gospel. So we make no qualms about it. We are going to preach the gospel, and that's a, a significant and primary goal for them while they're with us. We also have relational components of that and a restoration goal, which really go hand in hand with one another. But we often tell the families that these residents come from that we care about natural family restoration. Mm-hmm. Uh, meaning we are a good option when the current setup is not the best option, but our goal is always for whole families Mm -hmm. because we believe that God's goal is for whole families, right? God is a God of family and relationship, so we are consistently seeking to have natural family restoration. And so, yes, that is an essential part of it. We do most of the time find that residents of the youth program do the best, though, whenever they stay with us through high school graduation. So typically... Mm -hmm. Residents that do come to our program, they find the most success while they're mending the relationships with their natural family that they finish all the way through high school graduation through our on-campus elementary school, middle school, and high school, Heartland Christian Academy as well. Mm -hmm. How do the people come to Heartland? Are they referred? Yeah, so the youth side of Heartland has been a very big component for a long time. So honestly, now we exist as far as our resident intakes, mostly on referrals. We have updated websites. Um, As Scott mentioned earlier, we are making an attempt to to be much more intentional on our external relations, making sure that our local and semi-local people know that we're still here to help hurting men, women, and children. 
but primarily as far as the youth goes, we've just had and served so many youth over the years, and including men and women, that there's a strong referral basis uh, that we see in our applications for the youth program. Mm -hmm. We have house parents that are set up in each of the locations. Whenever I'm meeting with them, I tell them, you're the experts. I'm the person here that's to help you serve these residents directly. Mm -hmm. So these are a man and a woman, married Christian couple. All of them have had children of their own, raised them successfully, and are now helping serve in these capacities. As far as the administrative side, there is an admissions director that helps manage the admissions, the phone calls, the mm-hmm. inquiries, and the things of, such as that. Same thing for the women and the men? For the women's home, I'm much more hands-on. We have a smaller staffing, so I'm very involved in the day-to-day operations. I talk a lot with group leaders, maybe about specific issues that are going on with the resident if they aren't sure what direction to take it or what options are available. We have a guy that works admissions at the men's center. He helps with our admissions process as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So we really work in tandem with him as he facilitates both the men and the women Mm -hmm. getting them here. And anybody that is interested in applying, you know, Mm -hmm. it's hlandrecovery.org. And, you know, it gives all the information, what they can expect from us, and also what we will give them when they're in our program. And if it's something they want to be a part of, there's an online application and then Uh, Eric Tribble is the guy's name, the admission director's name, and he'll contact him, you know, within a day and see what we can do to try to get people uh, the help that they uh, are wanting. I was reading over that website has a link to your newsletters, past newsletters, and his story is actually in one of them, and it's just titled Eric's Story, and he has a story like you guys. He -hmm. came out of the program as well. To me, that's very encouraging that it's so successful and is so life-changing that people want to stay and help others through it as well. So that, I think, speaks highly of Heartland Recovery. And one of the nice things about that is, is we have people from different backgrounds and different walks of life. Like Jacob, you know, he's from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I'm from Iowa. Adrian's from Illinois. So we got people from all around the United States, but also, um, Jacob was like pretty much like a professional UFC fighter almost. <laughs> um, I was a prison guard, different mm-hmm. things. So mm-hmm. we have all these different peoples and backgrounds. So when people come, it's easier for somebody to identify at least with one person. Yeah. Oh, I have that kind of background. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't know you were into that. Like, I, I like this hobby too. It helps with the building of rapport. Yes. And it just, uh, I think uh, it's really beneficial. You can have a shared experience sort of that right. Right. levels the playing ground mm-hmm. to start the recovery. It helps start people open up a little bit more yeah. when they yeah. see this commonality. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I often say that there's no words that are more connecting in relational capacity than the words, yeah, me too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And good. so mm-hmm. I believe, if I remember correctly, every men's center staff has been through the program, right? All but one. All but one. And majority of the women's center staff mm-hmm. as well. So we are... Mm-hmm. mostly staffed by residents of our program yeah. that are graduates that have gone through the program, successfully graduated, felt the call of God to stay and then that to give back what's been so freely given to them as well. Mm-hmm. Is this what you see yourselves doing for the rest of your life, if God so chooses? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine doing anything else. Anything else? And Jacob, uh, are look, you going to become a world Walter Wade or something. Nine years ago, (laughs) almost now, I went to a Christian recovery program similar to ours. My goal was to stop using drugs and to go back to fighting. Uh And um, God's plans were so much larger than mine (laughs) that I would never imagine I would be where I am today, doing the things that I am today. So I just, I like to follow his plans and to keep my plans held loosely. Mm -hmm. There's an old Yiddish proverb that says, man plans God laughs. Right. <laughs> well, it sounds like he's got all three of you exactly where right. he wants you. <laughs> so, and that website again is hlandrecovery.org. That has a lot of information. There's an admission form on there for men, women, or youth. Right. Is the the youth too? does have its own website, but there is a link on HN Recovery that'll get you to the youth programs okay. website. Okay. hlandrecovery.org. Thank you all so much. Yeah, it was so uh, much. we're recording this on a Thursday and it's pouring rain. So I appreciate you driving over in the pouring rain to share with us today and hopefully you'll have a safe journey back. 
And God bless you for all of the work that you do and the lives that you're touching for God. I appreciate it. It's wonderful to see young, bright faces who love the Lord and want to serve him by serving others. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. And I want to remind our listeners also to pray for Heartland Recovery, for each of the people going through it, man, woman, or youth, and for Scott, Adrian, and Jacob in doing the invaluable work that they do for the Lord. And again, that's hlandrecovery.org. You've been listening to Light on the Heartland. Our guests today have been Scott Miller, Adrian Miller, and Jacob Lekich of Heartland Recovery Program out of Bethel, Missouri. For Light on the Heartland, I'm Cherie Eklaw. Thank you for listening. Join us next Saturday morning at 9 for Light on the Heartland, brought to you as a public service of Bot Radio Network, KLTE.